Hey there, I'm Lance. I'm Sam. And we are Love to Hate. And today we're taking a look at a set of games from Plate. In this video, we are featuring three different games that are all running on Kickstarter as well as an accessory. And this is all on the same Kickstarter campaign. And if you'd like to know more about these games as well as this accessory, check out that Kickstarter campaign link down below in the description of this video after you watch our video. But in this, we're going to be previewing Minnow Dice, Dragon Stripes, and Ada's Library, as well as the Game Rack, which is a dice tower slash dice tray slash card holders. This thing does a lot. Let's go down below. We'll show you how these three games work, as well as showing you the Game Rack accessory, and then we'll come back and share our thoughts on this. All right, the first of the three games we're going to take a look at is Dragon Stripes. Now, this is a push your luck game in which you are going to be trying to guide this little night meeple along the long dragon tail here, hopefully getting to the dragon's head. And if you do so, you will be the winner in this game. Otherwise, it's going to be whoever has the most gems and uh, as is the case with many Kickstarters, this is prototype here. You're going to have double the amount of gems in the final product of the game. And so that's this is not representative of what uh, the gems look like or how many gems you will receive, nor are the components here. But uh, with this meeple here, I do want to point out that this meeple is uh, two pieces here, that this sword uh, comes apart from the meeple. I think that's pretty cool. So you get a little meeple sword there. How about that? Now, uh, in this game, like I said, it is push your luck. And what you are going to be doing on your turn is you are going to be flipping over a card. And when you flip over a card, it's going to have a number on it. And that number is going to tell you how many spaces you are to move the meeple. So in this case, we're going to move the meeple four spaces. And each space is a little spike on the tail here along with the different stripes. And so we're going to go one, two, three, four. Now, if you'll see closely here, there are four white gems next to the four. And uh, that tells me how many gems I will collect this turn. So we would say four white gems. And I don't exactly get those gems. They go out here into like a, a middle community pot, if you will. Now, each space is the same number of gems. So it's not just a random number assigned to four, it's four because four gems. And uh, then I make a decision. I can either keep going and flip over another card or I can say, no, I'm gonna hold for right there. Uh, I'm gonna say that I'm gonna keep going and I'll flip over another card and I get a one this time. And so we're gonna move one more space forward onto the five and this time I'm going to add five gems. Red gems are worth five. Blue gems are worth 10. So now I have a total of nine gems out here. And again, I would decide whether I want to keep going or I want to hold and I'll keep going. And so I'll move four more. And this continues until one, two, three, four. Uh, and we'll put out nine gems this time uh, until I say, you know what? I think I'm going to stop. And so when I say stop, I'm going to stop at that spot and uh, the other players decide whether they want to take over and what that means is is that they are going to be the ones flipping over the card determining whether or not the, the meeple continues on towards the dragon head and uh, if they do decide they want to take over then they are going to pay me a number of gems and the number of gems that they pay me is dependent upon how many gems i have collected thus far on my turn. You can see there, if I've only collect, collected one through 10, then uh, they only have to pay me one gem to take over. If I collect more though, they're gonna have to pay me more, all the way up to 40 gems. You can see that right there, that's pretty crazy. And so in this case, I have uh, somewhere in the ballpark of it looks like uh, 19 or so, I think. So they would have to pay me a total of 10 gems to take over. And then they would get to be the ones to uh, flip over the card. And what you're hoping to avoid is this X. If this X comes up, you've alerted the dragon and uh, you are going to lose all of the, the gems that are here in the pot. But not only that, you also lose a quarter of the gems that you have collected on previous rounds. So that's really bad. 
Now, if you happen to flip over an eye, this is the other kind of card that's in the game here. If you flip over an eye, that means the dragon is starting to wake up for good. There are only three of these in the deck, and they're really bad when they show up, or at least the second one that shows up is extremely bad because you're going to flip over this uh, card right here that shows the dragon sleeping to the dragon being a little bit more aware of what's going on. And uh, instead of it being half, or excuse me, a quarter of the gems that you have on a previous round, if you flip over an X, then it's going to be half. So the penalty is far much worse. And uh, when you do get an X or a Dragon Eye, you do start back over at the end here. And uh, when the uh, third and final Eye comes out, then the Dragon is fully awake. You take this card off the end here, and you can see there that the Dragon is fully awake, and the game immediately ends. Whoever has the most gems is going to be the winner. Otherwise, if someone is able to get all the way past the 17th space, so if you get all the way here then you automatically end the game and you collect all of the gems that were in the pot. And most likely, if that's the case, you are going to be the winner because, again, it's whoever is the richest. And that is how you play Dragon Sli Stripe. Excuse me. Let's go on to see the next game. All right, so here's our second game, Minnow Dice, which is a dice rolling trick taking game. And I'm also going to show you all the game rack dice tower accessory uh, that also comes with these card trays that you can connect to form a dice tray. And so we'll demonstrate how this works here in just a second. But as I said, this is a dice rolling game. And so you do have dice in this game. You're going to have seven different dice and the dice are going to come in two different varieties, uh, and you can see that on the player shields that every player is going to have here. You're going to have dice that are below this white line, such as the gray, purple, yellow, and red dice. They're gonna have pip values on them, ranging from one to seven, so these are not your tra tra traditional D6s. Uh, there are also going to be some white flags, and anytime you see white flags on any dice, that is going to be a zero, so you don't want to try and get those. Uh, the dice that are above the white line are special dice that are going to have uh, some special powers. The brown dice up here, they, these are minotaur dice, and minotaur dice are going to be anything below the white line. They are also going to beat the green griffin dice, but they're not going to beat the, the blue mermaid dice. Uh, the green griffin dice, they are going to beat anything below the blue, uh, the white line. Uh, they are also going to be able to beat the mermaid dice. But as I mentioned earlier, they will lose to the minotaur dice. Uh, the blue mermaid dice, same thing. They're going to beat anything below the white line. Uh, but they are not going to beat the green griffin dice. They are going to beat the brown minotaur dice. Now... There are some bonus points attached to the Minotaur dice and the Griffin dice. If uh, the Minotaur dice defeat any Griffin dice, they're going to get bonus points for that. And likewise, if the Griffin dice defeat any of the Mermaid dice, they're going to get bonus points for that. Now, the Mermaid dice do not have bonus points, but what they do get is the special advantage that if all three of these kinds of dice are in the same uh, battle or the same hand, then uh, they're going to hold the tiebreaker. It's kind of like a paper, rock, scissors uh, to determine that they're, so that there's not a tie. The Mermaid dice are going to win that and defeat all of these dice up here. Uh, only if they're in the same round, by the way. Now, uh, how a round works, uh, this is going to be a little tricky to explain. Hopefully I do this well. Uh, in the first hand, you are going to draw one die from the bag and have one round. In the second hand, you're going to draw two dice from the bag and have two rounds. In the third, you will draw three dice and have three rounds and so on and so forth for a number of rounds dependent upon, or number of hands, excuse me, number of hands dependent upon how many players are in the game. And you can see here how many hands you are going to be playing. Now, what this looks like, you again will draw one from the bag. And let's say that I draw this one right here, this gray one. Uh, and uh, I put it behind my player shield here so that no one sees what I drew. And the same thing, other players will be drawing things uh, from the bag, putting them behind their player shields. And so you're not exactly quite sure what everyone has. You just know what you have. And then after everyone draws the correct number of dice for that hand, then you will hold one hand out here. 
And on the count of three, you're going to make your best minotaur sound by going grow, grow, grow. And uh, when you do that, you'll hold out a number of fingers saying that's how many tricks you're betting on winning that turn. And so in the first hand, you only have one die, so there's only one trick. And you would either hold out one or you're going to say, nope, I'm not betting at all. I'm, I'm betting zero. And uh, after everybody determines how much they're betting, you'll write that down. And then it'll go to rolling of the dice. Now, there will be a start player for each hand, and that will rotate clockwise at the end of a, of a round. And uh, that player will pick one of their dice to roll. Again, you'll only have one at the beginning. And so you'll roll it. And here's a demonstration of how well this clock tower works. There it goes. And oh, no, I got the flag. And the flag is zero. So I'm not going to win this particular hand, more than likely. Now, whatever the start player rolls, if it's one of the uh, the regular dice, the one that have pip values on them, that's going to be the suit that everyone else has to play according to if they have that color. So because I rolled a gray, the other other players at the table have to roll gray unless they don't have a gray. Then they can roll whatever they want to roll. And uh, again, the uh, highest value is going to win that round unless uh, you know one of these special dice is in. And as I've already told you how that works, that will determine who is going to win that trick. They will get to claim those dice. So let's say it's the purple player that wins. And uh, that is the one trick. And hopefully if they bet one, then they are correct and they will get 10 points times however many they bet. Uh, if you go below or above what you bet, then you're going to get negative 10 points for each one that you went under or over what your original bet was. If you bet zero, then you are going to win 10 times whatever that hand is. So in the first hand, you'll win 10 times one, 10 points. If it's the second hand, you'll win 10 times two, 20 points, so on and so forth. And again, you'll play up to a number of hands that is dependent upon the number of players in the game. Whoever has the most points is going to be the winner, and that is how you play Minnow Dice. Let's go on to the next one. All right, the last game that we're going to be showing you guys in this Kickstarter is Ada's Library, which is a two-player pattern building game in which you are trying to arrange your different books to match the pattern that is on the uh, master books here in the middle of the playing area. Players are going to sit across from each other as I have it set up here, and you're gonna draw these tiles one at a time from this bag here, placing them left to right as you go along. After all players, or both players, excuse me, have their 10 tiles, then you are going to reveal what the master plan is that you are trying to get your books and orders for. So we've got yellow, light blue, red, brown, dark blue, and gray. And so that's the pattern that I want to follow with my books here. Now, if I am missing one of the colors, say I did not have this brown and it was a different color, then I would just skip over brown and I would try to get the rest of the colors in the correct order. After you uh, reveal the plan, players are going to get five cards from the draw pile here. And uh, the, draw, the cards here are going to be what allow you to take actions to move your books around. On your turn, you are going to play a card or discard a card. So let's go over what the different cards are and how they help you. Now, I do want to point out these are the same racks that were used to make the dice tray earlier that you saw in the previous rules video. They can be used to hold up cards and you can connect these to make it longer so you can hold more cards. It's pretty nice. Now on these cards, you're going to have two different types. Uh, the first type that I wanna point out all have red icons in the top, and that is because they are going to interact with your book tiles here in front of your playing area. This particular one, uh, the numbers are gonna range between one and four, and uh, whatever the number is, that is how many spaces you are going to be able to move one of your books to uh, either forwards or backwards in your line, and you do have to do the exact number. So I have to move exactly four if I were to use this card. So for instance, I really don't want this red book here because uh, it needs to be more so in the middle, so I would ex have to move it exactly four spaces over, and now I have it right next to my other red, which is kind of nice. That's where I would like to have it. 
Uh, this particular card right here is going to have you move a book to the end of the line. Uh, again, it can either be uh, the beginning of the line or the very end of the line. It doesn't matter. So in this case, I might want to play that card to move this yellow book all the way down here to this end of the line, scooting all the other books over just one space. This particular book right here is going to have you swap the position of two different books that are exactly three spaces apart from each other. And these numbers are going to be uh, different on each card. And so I might uh, use that. Uh, I'm not really thinking too much here. I would just maybe go one, two, three and swap these two books, uh, their positions. That looks good. And uh, this particular card here is going to have you swap the books that are at the ends of the, the of your row. And so the first book would swap with the very last book, uh, vice versa. Now that's on the uh, red cards here. There is one other type of red card that I want to point out, and that is that it allows you to swap a book with the book that's in the exact same position with your opponent. So this is why you sit across from your opponent because uh, you may want to uh, swap a book that is not in a really good spot for you uh, with a book that's in a very good spot uh, based off of where it's at with your opponent. And uh, so if my opponent were playing that against me, for instance, or no, you know what, let's do this. I would swap maybe this one here with uh, that one since gray needs to be at the end of the line. That really helps me out. That's how you could do that. Uh, now, the other cards are going to have black icons on them and that's going to tell you that this has nothing to do with your tiles but it has everything to do with the master plan that you are trying to follow as you can see here you can alter that you can mess with it you can move a particular book that's in the master plan two spaces forwards or backwards or you can swap a spot with one that is adjacent to it and so that's how those cards are going to work, getting to alter this plan. And maybe that helps you with the arrangement that you have and it really harms your opponent. Anyhow, the first play person to get their books in the correct order is going to be the winner. And that is how you play Ada's Library. Let's go back up top and we'll share our thoughts on all of these games that you've seen in this video. And we're back. And now we're gonna share our thoughts on these three games, letting you know how we thought of them as a gamer and non-gamer go. We're gonna start from uh, left to right, your left to right, uh, with Ada's Library. So Sam, this was a two-player game in which you were playing cards from your hand, uh, pattern, pattern recognition, trying to match your books with the master plan quicker than the other player. How did you feel about this one as a non-gamer? This was probably my favorite one out of the three. I think that there's a lot more strategy in this game than some of the others that we'll talk about. Um, and I really enjoyed it. I thought it was really well done and um, I enjoyed the strategy. It wasn't too much of a um, brain burner to where um, a, a, a non-gamer wouldn't enjoy it. I, I think that it's perfect, the perfect amount of, I don't know. Um, Thinkingness, maybe, is yeah, the right word. Yeah, for a gamer and a non-gamer. I think this is, I, I really enjoyed this game a lot. Yeah, I really enjoyed it as well. Um, it was definitely a good head-to-head -head yeah. struggle between you and the other player. And it didn't really feel like the gamer had such an advantage if they are one who strategizes better than the other. Um, it, it really felt like uh, you had good choices, but it was never too much that you really had to sit there and, and art, you know, just go through every possibility and, and turns were going to last 10 minutes a turn. It's quick and snappy. It feels like, uh, you know, that you, you could go one of several different ways on your turn and, and you, you know, you're, you're just playing those cards, trying to get the books in the right order. And then your opponent does something and you're like, oh man, now I need to, not, now I need to adjust. This felt like a lot of adjusting, um, seeing what your opponent was doing, seeing if they manipulated the master plan. I really enjoyed it as well. Yeah. yeah. Uh, solid two player game, Ada's library, one that you would really recommend playing with non gamers, yeah, I imagine. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Let's talk about Dragon Stripes. Dragon Stripes is a push your luck game. It's a game uh, in which you are going to be flipping over cards, moving the knight closer to the dragon, uh, getting those gems. Sam, what were your thoughts on this one? Push your luck games aren't 
always my favorite and it can be a little frustrating I think for non-gamers. I think it was very well done. I don't want to say simple in a bad way, simple in a good way for a non-gamer. It was just enough to introduce you to the concept and um, the game wasn't too lengthy or anything like yeah, that. for um, sure. So I think it was a good way to introduce that type of game to a non-gamer. Very different from Ada's Library, um, a different type of... It's a different feel altogether yeah. with it, for sure. It's got that push your luck in it, like we just said. Um, you, you mentioned that push your luck can be frustrating. And while this game is, there's there's a lot of risk in this push your luck with yeah. this one because you stand to lose a good chunk of your gems on your turn. And the thing with this one is, is you can gain a ton of gems and then lose them all the very yeah. next turn, or a good number of them, not all of them. Uh, and so this is a very swingy game. Some people might not be too keen on that, but you got to remember that all of these games are fairly light, and I feel that they're all good family games, games you can play with your kids, games you can yeah. play with your non-gamer spouse or friends or whoever it might be. And because of that, it, it leaves everybody feeling like, you're never too far out of it. You can still get back into it in this one and still, you know, you still have a chance to win. Yeah. Uh, even if you bust five times in a row, you could still win with Dragon Stripes. Um, I really enjoyed it. Felt like every turn flipping the card over was tense and yeah. exciting. Uh, it, was a, it was a cool experience with this one, Dragon Stripes. Let's talk about Minnow Dice real quick. Minnow Dice is a uh, uh, draft, or not drafting, it's a trick taking, excuse me, uh, betting game, except you're rolling dice, which is an unusual thing. I don't know that I've ever seen a trick taking dice game. You know, usually we think trick taking is cards and you're playing cards and you pick from a hand of cards. With this, you're picking from dice that you keep behind the shield and you're rolling those dice. That being said, there is luck with that, rolling the dice. Sam, let me get your thoughts on Minnow Dice real quick. I think out of all of these, this one was the most frustrating. Um, they were all, they all introduce you to a, a different concept. Trick taking, or um, yeah. Trick taking, trick -taking yeah. is my, probably my least favorite of the three. <laughs> and I do feel like it's 85% luck, which is probably an overstatement, but it felt very much like luck. And unlike with Dragon Stripes, where anybody could win, I really felt like with this one, the first player had the an first advantage. First player had an advantage. And if you're winning by like the third round, it's real hard to catch up. Now, I will say on this one, I, I think I might disagree with Sam. I liked Minnow Dice probably the best out of these three. Um, and the reason for me is, and it might be that I do, I do like trick-taking games. And I think if you are a person who likes trick-taking games, you'll want to try Minnow Dice just because of how different and unique it is. If you don't like uh, trick-taking or if you don't like betting, uh, betting in trick-taking per se, because you really kind of have to have a good grasp on yeah. what to bet to do well in those trick-taking games that have betting in them, you know, where you're betting, I think I'm going to take so many tricks, like, like you might do in spades, for instance. You really got to know how to do that if you're going to do well in a game like Minnow Dice. And if you do that well, I think you're really going to like this game because it's so unique. The way the dice work, the way they're, uh, they, they're, they're custom dice. They're not just D6s. And so each dice is different and there's zeros on a lot of them. Even the really powerful dice, you still have a chance of getting a zero and you have to keep that in mind. The different colors, suits, the trumps, if you will. Um, it all really plays a factor in this. I really enjoyed it. Um, like I said, I, th I think it might be my favorite out of the three. So it's really you, uh, cool here how Sam, you really enjoyed Ada's library. I think we both really enjoy enjoyed Dragon Stripes. And we played, um, we played these two with our kids and I feel like our kids really enjoyed Dragon Stripes just because it was a really easy concept of, yeah, I wanna keep going or no, it's too much of a risk, I wanna back out. And I really enjoyed Minnow Dice. So, 
We had three games here that hit all of us really strongly in some way, shape, or form. So I think this is a solid Kickstarter, a good group here of these games. Real quick, want to tell you guys about the Dice Tower here. Um, we utilize this when playing Minnow Dice, the Dice Tower, with the Dice Tray. We use the Card Tray when playing Ada's Library. And I think you could use all of this uh, game accessories with just about any game that involves cards and dice. This is a really cool component. Even if you're not get, going to get the games, definitely check out this accessory, the game rack. So that is what you got with this Kickstarter here from Plate. Uh, again, go down below, check out that description or the link down below in the description of the video. Um, and again, these are all prototypes. We mentioned that in the rules video, so just keep that in mind. Uh, check out that link. Make sure to like and subscribe and push that bell button so you get notifications of all our new content. I'm Lance. I'm Sam. And we are Love to Hate, where we try to bridge the gap between gamers and non-gamers. We'll catch you next time.